hope you're all well. Welcome back to a brand new daily edit video. Um, so yesterday we did planning my outfits for the week. I will link that video up here if you missed it. And today we're continuing on with the clothing theme. But this time we're talking about a topic that I talk about all the time on my blog. I talk about a lot in my book and edited life, but I've never really mentioned it too much in videos. And that is all about clothing care. And ultimately clothing care is such a big part of a capsule wardrobe. If you're not caring for your clothing, if you're not giving it the TLC that it deserves, then your clothes just aren't going to last very long. And you're going to need to keep on buying things, replacing things all the time, and that is just like not good. We want to have things for a long time, we want them to last as long as they possibly can. And to do that, you need to give them a bit of love, a bit of tender loving care. So hopefully this video will be full of tips and methods that I use, will be able to help you out. If there's anything that you think that I've missed, it's probably in my book. I'll put a link to that in the description box below in case you wanna pick up a copy. Um, but also drop me a comment down below if there's anything that you think that I've missed out and I will let you know. Um, I feel like I need to add a bit of a disclaimer. I don't wanna say that I'm lazy with my clothing care, but I feel like I am quite efficient. This is not something that I want to dwell over for hours and hours a week. However, there are things that I do that are very quick, very easy to add into your routine. There's none of this hand washing things for hours business. I try and look after my clothing, but in a way that is quite time efficient and doesn't just eat up so much time. So there might be things that I do here that like raise a couple of eyebrows and that's cool. We're all entitled to our own opinion. And I feel like with any of these methods and any of these things I'm doing, it's always a good idea to go with your own gut because every fabric is a little bit different. Every washing machine is a little bit different. Always patch test where you can. These are just methods that I have found work really well for me. And um, yeah, keep things looking brand new, which is great. Let's start from the top here with cottons and everyday items. Those ones that you can kind of throw in the washing machine and not worry too much about. The washing basket in the other room is completely overflowing, so I'm gonna add in some demos here and show you what I actually do. But you know the drill with this one. You split it into lights and darks, and then I just throw them in my washing machine. Um, I use a non-bio detergent. I stick it on a 30 degree wash and I do a quick wash setting as well. Um, ultimately, I just feel like our clothing doesn't need to be washed for hours and hours at a time. And the quick wash setting on our washing machine takes it from about two and a half hours down to under an hour. So obviously that's quicker. It means that you can practically get all your washing done in one evening after work. I don't tend to use fabric softener. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I have a favorite, I will show it to you. Um, but a lot of workout gear, it's got lycra in it and fabric softener and those types of fabrics like aren't best friends. And so instead of having to do also like a separate workout wash with my Pilates gear in, I just prefer to throw it all in, not bother with fabric softener. I don't really feel like it needs it too much. It does make everything smell really nice, but ultimately I just like the idea of throwing it all in, not having to do more washes, which just ain't fab for the environment. Um, then when it comes out, we don't actually have a tumble dryer. A tumble dryer in our washing machine doesn't work. Um, so we just put it all up on areas and we tend to do that in the living room and stick on a dehumidifier. I picked one up from Amazon, literally one of the best things I've ever bought. I stick the dehumidifier next to the washing, I close the door and I leave it on until the dehumidifier is full and practically all my washing is dry. Um, it's amazing if you live in a flat and you can't put things outside. We don't have a garden, so we don't have a washing line. Um, also, I've heard that heated rails are a really good way of getting things dry really quickly as well. Otherwise, our washing was taking like three days to dry. We live in an old house. It is not that great. Um, so that is our current setup for that. So for my everyday and cotton items, um, here's what we're working with. I've split them into darks, lights. Um, I'm probably going to split that into two washes. Our washing machine is massive and I obviously want things to wash properly so I'm going to throw that all in there. Then I've got some non-bio detergent. I uh, just throw that in there. Close. I go for number four which is a 30 degree wash. I then do it onto a quick wash. You can't see that but now says 50 minutes. Start. There we go. Do your thing. I feel like the next category down is denim in that it requires a little bit of specialist care but not too much. You can buy and use denim specific detergent if you so wish. Personally, I've never gone down that route. If you do, let us know. Do you think that it's worth it? I just try and wash denim as little as possible. Sometimes I feel like it needs reshaping, so actually it is quite handy to wash it, but I just don't wash denim every single time that I wear it. And I think that's the general consensus here, is I just sort of 
throw it in on that 30 wash with my non-bio detergent and try not to wash it for too long but ultimately I try not to wash denim too much. It really can affect the wash of the denim, can affect the shape of the denim. Um, I write in the book that I feel like unwashed denim is a UTI just waiting to happen. So I feel like it's best to find a middle ground here. You don't want it to grow legs but also you don't want to be washing it like every couple of days. So find your happy place, stick with that but I actually just throw that in the wash that I mentioned earlier. Okay, wool and cashmere. Now this is such a tricky one and I have ruined wool jumpers, I have ruined cashmere jumpers so I feel like it truly has been trial and error with this one. Now if you read about caring for cashmere and wool there's a lot of hand washing involved, there's a lot of like gentle wringing out involved and I have tried that and I just find it to be really really time consuming and I don't wear my jumpers because I can't be asked to wash them and I'm just not big on owning things if you're not wearing them so I found a happy place for me but like I said my disclaimer is coming in big time here this might not work for everyone personally I put my wool and cashmere in my washing machine I know shock horror however I always put it on a cold hand wash never a 30 degree hand wash never like just just don't just don't bother a cold hand wash is what works best for me. In our washing machine that's about 40 minutes so it's really not in there for that long at all. Um, sometimes I do put it on a spin cycle after if it is quite a really chunky knit that really has absorbed that water and it is never going to dry. But I don't always do that. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But cool hand wash only and I use a specific detergent. Um, I'll show you the one that I use. I'll show you how I wash them in a clip in a second. Um, but that is just what works best for me. I've tried the whole hand washing, it just doesn't work and when it comes out I do the whole trick of putting it on an airer with a dehumidifier in the room and it just dries everything really really quickly but I try not to pull it around too much, I try not to misshape it, I try not to let it like hang and droop and also with storing them, store them folded, it really 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 helps them to keep their shape and not have big hanger marks in the shoulders which is always happening to mine before so definitely be careful how you wash them definitely be careful how you store them. Another thing that I would really recommend with wool and cashmere and also just other delicate fabrics can do this is you know they start pilling, they start bobbling, get yourself a cashmere comb or some kind of fabric debobbling tool. It's incredible, it will completely change your game when it comes to TLC and clothing care. Anytime something starts looking a little bit worn, looking a little bit bobbly, I've saved you a really darn bobbly piece so you can see what I mean here. But just giving things a wash, like I mentioned, or giving things a steam, we'll get to steaming in a minute, and then giving it a once over with a fabric debobbler, maybe even a lint roller, and something can honestly look brand new. It is such a good tool to have in your kit, it really changes the game. So I've currently got a dark wash on but I am going to throw these in next. These are just all my wools and cashmere jumpers. Uh, I have quite a few, it's basically all I wear on my top half so whenever I do a wash there's always a good couple that need to go in. But I basically just throw them in the washing machine and I put it on a 19 wash which me is hand wash cold. I sometimes do a spin at the end if things are particularly damp but not normally. And then I'll show you the detergent that I use. Um, I normally just use the Waitrose cashmere wash but they were sold out online forever and in store as well so I've just got this one, I got it off Amazon, I'll link it down below for you. It's the Belinda Robertson Luxurious Cashmere Wash Extra and um, I feel like it works really well, they smell good, they're coming out nice and clean so I'd happily recommend this one. So this is an Under the Stories jumper that is ready to go in the wash hence why it's a little bit creased but I wanted to show you this one because hopefully you can see all of this bobbling here on the arm and just kind of all over the fabric in general. Um, it happens sometimes, it's not necessarily a tell of quality, it's a natural fibre so sometimes it just does this, but this is where you need to get a fabric debobbler in your life. Um, I did have one I think from Philips originally that is a little bit more affordable than this one so I'll link that one down below. Um, this is from Steamery, Lily got it for me for my book launch which is very very sweet of her. But ultimately it's almost like an electric razor but for your clothing. Um, it sounds kind of scary but I promise you it's not, you just click that button, off it goes to do its thing. So just to show you the difference, this arm I've done and then this arm I haven't. Honestly makes it look 
brand new again and just takes about five minutes per jumper and maybe I do it kind of once every couple of months. When it comes to silk, there are some silks that just do not want to be washed in the traditional method. So I would always, always, always recommend doing like a little spot test, like somewhere just inside one of the hems on a small bit of the sleeve that you can't really see. Um, it's those kind of washed silks that have almost a brushed effect on them, that they have a sheen that if you rub your hand on it, the sheen sort of shifts direction. Those types of silks just do not like to be washed and I have ruined many a silk shirt because of that. So when they have that kind of texture to it, I would definitely stick to dry cleaning only. Or I do have another tip, which I will be sharing in a minute. But if it hasn't got that type of texture to it and you've done the spot test and it all dries and looks completely fine, then I basically do the same thing that I do with my wools and my cashmeres. I stick them in a hand wash only, cool wash in the washing machine and I use a silk specific detergent. And they come out completely fine, looking brand new, and I just wear them so much more than if I have to take them to the dry cleaners for like five pounds a piece or something to get them dry cleaned. But I would recommend using caution with this method and definitely spot checking before you throw them in the washing machine. So I've actually only got one silk shirt to wash, so I won't be washing this this week just because it's so pointless just to put one silk shirt in. I'm, I could hand wash it if I could be bothered, but normally I just pop it in the washing machine with this. This is the Waitrose Delicate Clothing Wash. Actually suitable for wool as well, um, but silk is what I tend to use it for. Um, so yeah, I just wait until there's a couple more silk shirts and then I'll stick it in um, just like the rest of this stuff. I pop it on the hand wash cold and then put a glug of this in. So when it comes to dry clean only items, if they're not wool and they're not cashmere and I've already like tested them for that and they're completely fine, or if I've done my little silk test and I've thrown them in the washing machine and they turned out completely fine, especially if it's more of an occasion piece, I tend to just leave it to the professionals, like you do not want to be messing up something that has cost you a small fortune and you don't want to be disappointed when it comes out of the washing machine and would barely fit a Barbie doll. So I sort of go off past experience with this one, but the majority of the time I will leave it to the professionals unless it fits into any of those three previous categories. Um, however, I do have a little trick up my sleeve. Um, sometimes you've only worn something for a couple of hours, you can't be bothered to take it to the dry cleaners, but it just needs a little bit freshening up and for that I would recommend a clothing steamer. Um, I got one off of Amazon a couple of years ago. It is so handy, so helpful. It's like a little travel one. It's basically a mini kettle that produces steam and can get creases out of things but also just works to really freshen a garment as well. Um, I recently upgraded to this steamery one, bought it myself, 100% would recommend, absolutely love it. It's kind of like a steamer slash iron in one and as someone who completely hates ironing, this makes me actually iron my things, which is always a good thing. Um, so this can really help to keep things fresh between dry clean sessions, um, but also it's a really handy gadget to have, especially if you travel and maybe you've done like a 10 by 10 challenge. I'm always being asked, 10 by 10 sounds great, but how do you keep things fresh if you're wearing them multiple days? Get yourself a clothing steamer, even better a travel one so that you can travel with it and it's just like small and nifty and you can take it around. It's such a good way of looking after your clothing, kind of washing it but not washing it, and just keeping things fresh and crisp and crease free. Okay, fabric steamers. Um, so these are the two that I have. This is the first one that I bought off of Amazon. I think it was about 20 pound, a real bargain. Um, the chamber in it is quite small uh, for water, so really you can only do one to two shirts with it. And actually the chamber in this one is quite small as well. So you do have to refill them with water quite a lot. They're the handheld ones, you can get much, bigger steaming devices. They cost around the 200 pound mark though, much more expensive and obviously much bigger to store. But these are small, handheld, good for travel. This one is probably better for travel. It's obviously much smaller. You can see this takes up quite a lot of space and is quite chunky. I'll link this one down below for you. I'll link this one too. It's from that fancy brand Steamery again. Um, I got it off a website called, I wanna say Bear and Bear, uh, but I think they also do it on Selfridges, uh, Net, other, fancy schmancy websites. This one comes with a heat proof bag, which you can also use as a mitt over your hand to kind of help pull the fabric and you can press the steamer down onto it as you seen, which is kind of cool. Comes with a little attachment for delicate clothing as well. I'm gonna use this one today and I'm actually gonna use it on this silk shirt that I was mentioning earlier. If I come close, yeah, there you go. Hopefully you can see how wrinkled it is. Like I said, this is my only silk shirt that needs a wash. It's been in my bag from Amsterdam. It's just a little bit creased. I'm pretty sure it can just be freshened up. Um, so I'm gonna do that now with my steamer. Okay. 
it looks brand new. No creases, really didn't take that long. Nice and fresh. And um, yeah, I just absolutely love using it. It makes ironing kind of fun. <laughs> so I think that's everything. Those are all of my tips and hopefully it was helpful to see a couple of them in action as well. I know that the whole clothing debobbling thing is so satisfying. And let me tell you what's even more satisfying is like cleaning it out at the end and all the bobbles go in the bin. Oh my word, it is so, so fun. I know, I'm wild. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Like I said, there is more clothing tips in my book, so check this out if you would like to pick up a copy. Guys, we're on the second edition already. Like, is that not absolutely wild? Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, like I said, if there's anything that I've missed out, drop me a comment below. I will try my best to get back to you. And tomorrow, I'm sitting in the same spot and I've got a new in beauty video coming where I've tried and tested the products. I've got new foundation, new cheap products, an eyeshadow palette that I'm kind of on the fence about, some new lip products. So keep an eye out for that. It's coming your way 6 p.m. tomorrow. Um, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.